It's still plus politics. Now, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Rabwa, recently said that the official declaration of bandits as terrorists will enable the armed forces to take necessary action against them. He also said the military would amend its tactics given the last development, adding that the criminals would be given the bloody nose so they, they so desire. Meanwhile, the leader of the Middle Belt Forum, Dr. Pogu Beatrice, argues that the change in nomenclature has not done any good or changed anything. Well, joining us to discuss this is security expert and uh, former director at the State Department, uh, DSS, I beg your pardon, uh, Dennis Abmakri, and legal practitioner, Dr. Hassan. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. All right. It's a pleasure program. Mr. Abmakri, I'm going to start with you. Um, okay. There's... A lot of people have been pushing for this. You know, it's, it's been a song and dance for the government to declare these bandits terrorists. Now they have been declared terrorists. And somebody's saying, well, it doesn't really change anything. Uh, so I'm really wondering, and I'm not in any way trying to make anybody look bad, but what exactly do we need for this fight to be fought well? And of course, these people to be uh, decimated, for the want of a better word. Okay, you know, there are two things that we have to consider here. The first one is actually the um, battle tactics. Battle tactics where the, um, the, you have the uh, contract that we signed for the Tokano jets. The Tokano jets, for one, are very tactical aircraft that are used either for the extraction of uh, uh, hostages or to deal with, uh, you know, terrorist situations. But the contract that we wrote was that, uh, you know, that is according to the, uh, the Act, um, the Arms Export uh, Control Act of the United States, 1976, it says that we cannot use those equipment on civilian population. And now that the terrorists have been declared by a court of competent jurisdiction to be terrorists, that means um, we can now treat them as either terrorists or military, not as civilians. Because when they are bandits, they are like, uh, what do you say, like um, thieves, highway robbers mm. that are civilians. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me come to Dr. Um, it seems that ter terrorists are not letting up in any way because, I mean, there are more and more killings and attacks. As we speak, I mean, every day as you open the pages of newspapers, you see more and more of these attacks happening. And just as I asked, um, you know, Mr. Macri, what exactly do you think the federal government is getting wrong? Or maybe, I don't know, the army? Because it seems like they're not letting up in any way. And they, they keep kidnapping, they keep killing what exactly are we yeah, not getting right? The, uh, we have a, we are in a country whereby um, we are lacking in decisive uh, governance, decisive leadership, decisive uh, uh, institutions. And uh, everybody seems to be uh, playing the ostrich game, ostrading, and not really taking that tactical positioning in dealing with issues, especially talking about issue of terrorism, killing banditry, kidnappings, which is fast um, eroding the policy now. And the level that we have at date, uh, the, the effect of the lackadaisical attitude from government before now, before the declaration of... Are you there, Mr. Hassan? Mr. Hassan, can you hear me? I think that we've lost that connection. But I'm, I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Mike. Okay. So it seems the, 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 the terrorists are being protected by government because at a particular point in time, the Ministry of Information issued a press statement, even the, the SA on media and all that, issued a press statement protecting on the reportage of killings of the terrorists or bandits. It's even a taboo, or even a, 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 it was sometimes banned. Uh, uh, that was a that was a um, a, a 
a ban by media house to talk about bandy as terrorists, whereby radio stations were being sanctioned and being uh, fined for, for, for discussing issues of banditry. And um, to many, these terrorists that we are all seeing every day in Zamfara, killing over millions of them, making a lot of life miserable, short, and uh, nasty, are having a free day because once these people are being arrested, the only thing you witness from the government is to let them free and recardalize them, uh, uh, re, uh, re, uh, you know, just bring them and um, engage them into our military structure. I don't know when nations, any nation in this world will make that sort of a hellish mistake. We are not, uh, because this is a psychological Well, I don't, think, I don't think that the federal government really were trying to integrate them into the army. They were trying to give them some form of amnesty, which... Uh, in the long run, didn't really work out well, but I don't think they were trying to integrate them into the army. We were, we were informed. We were informed sometimes around 2017, 2018. We are, we are all in the media when they said, okay, they've dropped their arm, they've granted them amnesty. All of a sudden, they, they recruited them into the Nigerian army without even purchasing. Even the boy, even our Nigerian youth that are interested to join the Nigerian army were not given this kind of grace. In, in this kind of a situation, amnesty to terrorists are not allowed because these people are not going to change. This is a, this is a, a psychological belief that killing and, bomb and, 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 and massless uh, kidnapping and all these things is the, the free day for them. This is what they live on. This is their own trading. This is their own belief. This is their own religion. So naming and changing from bandit to terrorists, even gazetting it, um, it is just to me, just to wipe um, a crocodile tears. It doesn't, okay. it has far, it has not in any way uh, bring that um, veil that, oh, these guys who are the sponsors, is there nobody, how did their hands get into this country? Do they have links in government? We've had reports of linking terrorism to some of government officials, was there any prosecution, investigation, and report of those investigations? Or will it just come as a political statement to rub it on our face as Nigerians? So what? statements like these give that boldness to these terrorist boys. Even the Nigerian army, we must give them kudos. Those yeah. boys are laying their lives and they are dying in droves every day. But the fact that the federal government is doing its best, providing some armory, the Tokano jet and all that, as far as our, our, uh, uh, our capacity as a nation, we shouldn't be talking about two, three, four Tokano jets. We should be talking about 100 jets, 200 um, bombers and all these things. These I guess those things are... also cost money and then we, we means that we also but, have to rejig our budgets to include that. The, the, we, we, have, we have had sometimes in this nation on that Jonathan. The NSA was given two billion to purchase arms and ammunition. The present administration also raised one billion dollars to purchase arms and ammunition. Where are those things? Is it the little ones that they, they delivered? How did you wait? Countries of the world come into their nation to have a vault of military technology. Technology I, is beyond. I think that these, these questions, I'm going to. I'm going to pose them back to Mr. Dennis Amaki. Mr. Amaki, I'm coming back to you now because he's asking me questions that I think you would be in a better position to answer. Uh, the former NSA boss is still in custody as we speak. Uh, we do not know how much monies have been re recovered and if these monies have been, you know, re um, be embossed into the purse of the NSA to get more equipment? That's the first question. Now, we also see a shift in these, uh, you know, insecurity and attacks that we, like I was speaking about Ebony State um, in the first segment, and we also know that Ebony is now uh, a hotbed. It was Emo State, but it's shifting to Ebony State, and we are seeing uh, some form of uh, uh, insecurity breeding more and more and spreading in the Southeast. So my question is, um, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken, was also pointing fingers at the federal government and certain persons in the government, in the corridors of power, as those who are sabotaging the security status of the Southeast. So I put, I, I'm posing the question to you. 
What exactly do you think is responsible for this fast spread of insecurity, especially in the southeast now? We know that, that there's insecurity in the northeast, the, that, the one in the northwest, but now the southeast is a hotbed. Um, thank you very much for that question. You find out that um, we as Nigerians are going through a lot of uh, problems, especially when it comes to the security arena. And uh, one of the major issues there is that um, in the Northwest, uh, we have bandits, and uh, we know how they manage to come into the country. And, uh, of course, uh, they, they are foreigners. And then, of course, the government have come out to say that, you know, we should get rid of these people. So now that they've even been declared as terrorists, some people don't believe that they are terrorists, but now that they've been declared, because there is a difference in dealing with a terrorist and uh, maybe an arm robber on the road. But as far as I'm concerned, all the acts that are happening, what they are doing is terrorism. And then, of course, beyond the, beyond the fear that they do in society, they also go ahead and donate money to. They finance Boko Haram, and it has been established many, many times. So this is what is happening there. But when you talk about the former NSA and uh, uh, monies that we are giving for arms and ammunition, you know, I think that thing is still in court. Although, you know, like I always say, sometimes we don't have the political will to strengthen our criminal justice system. And if we can do that, where people are indicted and, of course, taken to court and then, uh, you know, shamed, and this is what they did, they stole some money and everything, you know. Um, things will change for the better. But when we go for plea bargaining and other kinds of things, then it becomes a real problem mm. about uh, the NSA. Uh, quickly, before um, I, I let you go and then I, I, I pose the next question to um, Dawson, Governor El Rufai has actually come up with an idea saying, Kill all of them. Don't keep anyone. We don't need informants. Just because none of these people will be repentant. Should we be towing the line of Governor El Rufai in dealing with this bandit? Because everybody that you see on the streets and you ask them about this issue that, hey, now these people have been declared terrorists. In other words, we can deal with them as we deal with terrorists. So everybody says, well, uh, yeah, now they're terrorists. So what next? What's going to be done different? How do we deal with them? Is this going to change the tactics of the army? Is this going to make the government more stringent in their demands or their body language? What next? What should we look forward to? We're in 2022. Yeah, well, you mentioned two things here. Um, first of all, I'll talk about what will happen if they are terrorists, they will be dealt like terrorists because before we we're dealing with them as bandits. And then, of course, if they are terrorists, I will also want the Nigerian government to understand that this is the time to use a political will to stop this, because it is spoiling the name of the president, you know, whereby he is harboring it, you know, and being a, a former military general, we expect that he should come out and crush this, you know. So um, the other question you asked, I don't know, uh, please remind me. Oh, no, no. About, I, I, um, I was talking about the governor of Kaduna State saying no need to save anybody because, you know, sometimes the army takes, you know, prisoners of war for information. Uh, like, like, yeah. like, like the Middle Belt Forum is saying that the army knows where these people are. Um, there are people who go to visit these people. There, there are people who know exactly where to find them. But then that he's, they're yes. saying... Yeah, that, you're, you're, you're correct there. Um, yes, we can, in the Kaduna State Governor have said that we should go ahead and do a, a carpet bombing of the area. That means right from ground level, anything above the grass is going to go down. But you cannot do that because, see, we are a democratic society. If you go ahead and do that, you might kill the bandits as well as civilians. And that is what the, the agreement, the ACM, um, our Arms Export uh, Commission has said that the Act has said that you cannot use the weapons on civilians. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to carpet bomb the place, 
We have to be sure, of course, well, I'll excuse him because the Kaduna State Governor is not a military man, so he does not know exactly what it takes because the collateral damage that is going to happen there is going to be great. But anyway, um, right now that they've been declared, I think they should go all out hmm. to deal with them because there is no need to even negotiate it. They are foreigners. Let them go back to their country. Mm. You know, I think at this time we should be resolved. Okay. And finally, Dr. the campaign season is here, like I was saying earlier on. Politicians are going to come with the sweetest and the nicest sugar-coated tongue to tell us, you know, the things that they will be doing for us in the future, even when they know it's not within their reach. And I'm guessing that the issue of insecurity, just as it was used in 2015 and 2019, might also be a campaign tool for all and sundry. What should the average Nigerian voter be looking for? What should be our posture so that when these people come, we can also make our demands? What should those demands be in closing? Well, let me firstly, let, let me firstly add up first. One of the, the, the implication of naming um, the bandit terrorists is that the legal implication is that they'll be prosecuted under the uh, terrorism act now and the implication is by death so the, whereby uh there is no room for them to escape this time around the, 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 but the, the unfortunate thing is that um because we are used to this mr hassan are you still there <laughs> I think that we have lost connection with uh, Dawson Hassan. Can you hear me, Mr. Hassan? Oh, I think that we've lost that connection. Uh, let's try again. Can you hear me, Mr. Hassan? Uh, unfortunately, we've lost that connection with Dawson Hassan. I want to say thank you to Dennis Amakri. He's a former director of the State uh, Dep uh, Department of State Services, the DSS. And of course, uh, Dawson Hassan is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for being part of this conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break to see what people have to say about Nigeria's war against terrorism. And that will be where I live you tonight. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening. This thing you can no, you can't stop because you don't, you don't already ex, make exist for everywhere. Even some other countries don't they learn, or maybe our own country don't they learn from outside country. So to fight from Boko uh, 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 Haram or whatever, 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 it's too easy, sir. It's too easy. So to stop it, except to God interfere. The only way I feel my own opinion concerning this issue is that uh, the government, first of all. They should tackle it to the angle of, uh, uh, let me say, dialogue. Call these people together. You remember when we have this militancy in the Niger Delta? Then our president uh, was uh, our president then was uh, Shehu Musa Yaradua. He appealed to the boys, call them, say, in fact, you just uh, lay down your arms, let's talk together, and he granted them amnesty. So I believe the government which is uh, in power now, can still do the same thing. Obviously, the last solution for Nigeria, and I made them sell Nigeria, made them share the money, give all of us. There is nothing that can curb, you know, terrorism wholly. Even in other parts of the world, they still, you know, experience terrorism. But what I feel we can do right now, as Nigeria as a case study, is that we should engage you know, ourselves, you know, we should have personal way of uh, safeguarding ourselves. You know, that, that is happening in other Western parts of the, uh, of the world. Like, you have your own license, you have license to go on, you know. So if there is any means that, okay, you want to attack me, then I, I can actually, you know, save myself from, from the attack.